Clear prop. Star 73 is Cherokee, number two, following twin traffic, three mile final. There's nothing to do. One Charlie Bravo, Rickford in runway 25, going uh, four mile final. This is Behind the Prop with United Flight Systems owner and licensed pilot Bobby Doss and his co host, major airline captain and designated pilot examiner Wally Mulhern. Now let's go Behind the Prop. What's up, Wally? Hey, Bobby, how are you? I'm fantastic. This is uh, another guest show. We have a friend of ours from Four Flights today, Emily Norman. She is a marketing coordinator for Four Flight and has been a friend of mine for the last few years and a business partner as we've uh, hopefully grown both Four Flight and United Flight Systems together through some open house work and some things we've done with women in aviation. Welcome to the show, Emily. Thank you, Bobby. It's so great to talk to you again. And Wally, I am very excited to chat with you today because I think every student pilot in the Houston area um, knows your name from trying to schedule a check ride or just hearing all the good things that you've done and you know how you actually make students feel good and comfortable and at ease on their check ride day. Well, that's those are very kind words. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, Wally. Wally will say he tries to trick you so you don't know the check ride actually started. Um, and I remember having that feeling when I took my instrument check ride with him, I thought we were talking and then all of a sudden he said something to the effect of when do you have to file an alternate? And I was like, Whoa, wait, it's now we're, we're in this thing. It's going. So I I've been a participant in that for sure. That's great. There's no like three, two, one start. It's just as soon as you walk in the door, <laughs> pretty much the, uh, Emily and I met each other through, uh, I think it was right after I bought United fly systems. I was going to host an open house. I tried to find some partners that wanted to participate. I guess some people knew of us, but we we weren't a big, big school. And uh, Emily was gracious enough to point me in the right direction to find someone to host a little seminar on four flight, kind of the fundamentals of four flight. Uh, they have since been a partner that have participated in all of our open houses over the last four years um, and done a number of things to help us during COVID. We did some we'll call it remote learning to try and keep the aviation community going and uh, always have been an advocate for students and student pilots and uh, I've always really enjoyed the partnership. So thank you, Emily, for all of that. She's yeah, also course, I mean, been a student pilot at our flight school. Um, and she's uh, now you're a rated pilot. Uh, congratulations. And I, I wonder, are you working on any other future ratings? Yeah. So I'm actually uh, kind of on short final for my instrument rating. Um, I was able to hold on to my CFI for as long as possible uh, due to COVID because he wasn't called up to the airlines, but um, his uh, his calling came. And so I'm, you know, kind of on a wait list to start with a new CFI. It's been, sorry, my mailman just showed up. <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of on short final um, for the instrument, you know, rating and check ride. Um, I'm kind of on a wait list for a new CFI. That's kind of one of the struggles of, I think, owning your own plane and in an area where there aren't as many instructors, um, you know, you don't want to put into a flight school. You can find a freelance CFI, um, you know, we're, we're working on it, just flying as much as I can with my dad and, you know, keep those skills as crisp as possible for whenever I can, you know, get ready for the, the big check ride day. Wally, I might be calling you. I was right. going to say, I know a guy. I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my plans to get my instrument, um, I'd like to get my commercial multi, you know, I think whether I one day decide that I want to pursue a flying job or, you know, stay on the business side of aviation, you know, a good pilot is always learning as much as we say that phrase left and right. It's true. And you're only going to build your skill and confidence by flying more and pushing yourself outside of, you know, those boundaries into new aircrafts or, new types of flying. So just want to consume as much of it as I can and, you know, enjoy it on the way. Well, I mentioned it. you do work for four flight. I'm sure everyone in aviation is probably a little jealous of that. They, they all use your tools. Um, tell us, how did you find four flight and, and what, what, what do you do at the company? What do you love about the company? Give us a little bit of background. Yes. So I was actually about maybe a fourth of the way through my private. I think we were still working on, you know, trying to figure out how to land the dang thing and then get me going on my uh, cross countries. Um, and my CFI was just like, Hey, I, I flew today with someone who works at four flight. Um, I guess their office is in Houston. 
And, you know, that night I went home and was looking on their career page, which we are hiring right now on the marketing team and all over the company. So if anyone's looking for stuff like that, um, go check out fourflight.com slash careers. But yeah, I went on to the careers page and I saw on their um, site that they actually had some opening positions in marketing. And before I fell in love with aviation, I had uh, earned a double degree in international business management and marketing, uh, then found aviation. And so this was the perfect opportunity to you know, combine those two passions. And you know, I got the application in. Uh, thankfully, I actually was hired and I've been there for about four years now. Um, it's been absolutely incredible. I started as just kind of a basic marketing coordinator you know, picking up on social media. Eventually now I actually oversee everything on social media. So if you ever tweet at us, comment on any of our, you know, pages, DM us, more than likely it's probably me responding. So please be nice (laughs) always. Um, Another thing I also work in Are you saying people can be mean on the internet, Emily? Are you saying Oh yeah, sometimes. (laughs) It's not always a happy place, but it's also a great space to, you know, share stories, educate people, about what four flight can do. And then also just share experiences. Like there's so many times where we'll post something that's highlighting a feature and then other pilots chime in and just riff off each other. But I use it this way, or it's really helped me out in this such situation. So, you know, not only are we trying to educate our pilots, but the pilots themselves want to help out each other. It's such a big community aspect. So that's always been really fun, uh, kind of space to work in. And then another part of that, um, I've kind of evolved into a community marketing coordinator. So anything involving our online community on the ground community events, um, I kind of have my fingers in a little bit. So we, I get to work with our influencer marketing. Um, and so that's kind of our, you know, YouTubers our people who just have a really big social presence. Uh, some of the guys are like Jason Miller from learn the finer points, uh, Chris Palmer from angle of attack or Steve Thorne flight shops. And these guys are really fun to work with because not only have they become like friends and mentors to me, but every month we get to collaborate together on how can we reinforce some of these things that I'm doing on social media? How can you, you know, inspire people to fly, teach them new things about, you know, how they can be a better pilot, but then also how can they use for flight and you utilize, utilize it to be a safer tool. Um, so that's just a really great aspect as well. Awesome. Uh, she didn't say our names, Wally. We got to get a bigger following so we can be part of that influence. <laughs> there yeah, you go. exactly. And now exactly. behind the prop. Exactly. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so you are doing some pretty cool stuff and I'm not sure all of our listeners are aware of it, but hopefully our listeners will become listeners and viewers of your stuff. You launched, I think over the COVID timeframe, a show for four flight um, that I think is always video and audio called between two wings. Mm-hmm. Tell us a little bit about how that came about because that those things don't happen by accident is two guys to produce a show every week. Um, this is not an easy task every week. And I can't imagine the work that uh, a company like four flight puts into something like this, but tell us a little bit about between two wings and how it's got started and your love or passion around that stuff. Yeah. So, um, around this time last year, um, you know, someone kind of came to our team and was like, Hey, let's do this. Let's do a podcast. Um, let's do video as well, which I think makes it a little bit more stressful because not only are you worried about your words, but how you look on camera and, you know, it makes the editing a little bit harder. Um, and so we were tasked with this idea. We did a mock trial, uh, me and our EVP of marketing and sales, uh, where he interviewed me. And it was kind of just, you know, the logistics setup, like, is the audio working? Is Zoom going to be the platform we use? You know, what mic should, or what, um, what cameras should we use? All that stuff. Um, and at the end of it, he was like, okay, cool. This is a good idea. Emily, you should host it. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, I've never done anything like this before. Uh, fairly confident with public speaking, but it's a little different, you know, looking into your just into your laptop, you know, camera with a microphone next to you, trying to, you know, think of interesting, fun things to say. Um, But we got started. Uh, We interviewed a few of kind of our closer relationships with, you know, whether it be our influencers, some aviation friends I have, and we kind of just backlogged a lot of, a lot of episodes until we realized that this could potentially be something Um, And we launched it. And I think it was about March of this year. 
and we launched a teaser uh, or trailer video, I should say. And initially we were, you know, getting comments like, well, you guys better upgrade your mic quality and camera quality. And we we're like, oh no, what are we getting ourselves into? <laughs> it was not the feedback we were hoping for at first, but you know, like everything we do at Four Flight, we really listen to what people are saying and we take those aspects and put it into the work that we're doing. Um, so we're, you know, fast forward a year, I think we launched our 18th episode yesterday. Um, you know, our, our listens and views are on the rise, still trying to find our audience a little bit. Um, but I, I'm sure you guys have a lot of experience and know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. Um, it's not an easy thing, but you just, you have to start somewhere and enjoy the process along the way. I mean, at the end of the day, part of my job is sitting down for an hour and talking to fellow pilots and just nerding out about the thing that we love the most and learning from them and just getting a different perspective about the industry. It's, it's absolutely incredible. It's made my job a lot more fun. That's awesome. Well, I, Wally and I obviously have fun doing it. We, it mm -hmm. is not our job. We just enjoy doing it. And <laughs> we've struggled and probably been through all the same things you've been through the, the right when we launched everyone, all they did was praise our audio. It was by happenstance. I don't know why it happened, but mm -hmm. really early on, that's all people talked about was y'all sound like it's professionally done. And we really just sit in an office and talk to each other. Um, and then we have, we, we've done the same thing. We've been searching for our audience. We have a listenership on five continents almost every week, um, which blows our mind. It's obviously saturated in the United States with a, with a spattering around the world, but um, this past week we had more listens than we've had in a long, long time. So I think it's one of those things that'll just, it'll just continue to grow as you continue to keep momentum and the show continues to repeat. I think you'll see your listenership grow. And, um, while once addicted, we still both probably look at our statistics every day just to see. Oh yeah. It's hard, it's hard <laughs> not to look. Um, yeah, and then yeah, definitely. luckily we don't have any haters yet, but, uh, we've had some feedback. That's just, we wonder sometimes what people are thinking when they send the feedback in, we, we encourage it, but I don't remember what we we've had somebody, we, they thought we said something wrong. We didn't say something wrong. They were extremely mm -hmm. passionate about what they thought we said. Um, and it's, it's, it's a shame that uh, people get wrapped around some of those axles, but we love doing it. We love talking to people like you and also learning from that stuff. So um, tell yeah, us about that's, your, that's an interesting point that that's an interesting point you're saying about, you know, someone said, someone thought you said something wrong. And I think, you know, that's definitely something I'm always fearful for. Like I'm a low time pilot for about 200 hours. I have not done everything, you know, any, you know, big aircrafts or even touched on commercial or what, you know, multi-engine looks like. And I think that kind of translates a lot to, you know, pilots in general is where we can over critique sometimes and think we know what we're talking about or the way that something's supposed to be done. And, you know, it can be a little bit negative. And so I, it's about so much better to focus on the you know positive community side where we're all trying to help each other learn, you know, yes. not try to nitpick and call out things. So well, I, I kid, if, if someone's really upset, they can have their money back because it's a free show and we're doing the best we can. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to be upset about that. And I, my disclaimer, mm -hmm. Emily, I have, a, I, have, I have like a gift that you don't have. We have in our tagline, it says that we've together, Wally and Bobby have 24,500 hours of flight time. Well, <laughs> while Wally has 24,000 of those, he should be the one with all the right answers. Not me. I'm the new guy. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe I should be, but maybe I'm not. There, there have been episodes where Bobby has just flat out asked me a question, and uh, I, I just have to say, pause. I need yep. to look that up. I have to look it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just proves we don't all know That's everything great. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're you're clearly passionate about Four Flight, and if it's you've been there four mm -hmm. years, you were there pre merger, right, or pre acquisition. Correct. So yes. tell us, what do you love about ForeFlight? And uh, they seem like a great company from afar. We all love their technology. You've got the inside look. Tell us some of the things we maybe we don't know about the company. Yeah. So just starting off, I think, you know, like you said, probably everyone listening has, you know, heard of ForeFlight, uses ForeFlight. Um, it's, it's out there. Like it's a big name uh, company. But it's really fun to work for a company that is so well loved by people. Um, I think that's really rare. Um, and it's just a unique opportunity to not only uh, work for a company that people love, but it's actually making a difference and in innovating like in the aviation industry 
you know, we're making it easier to fly, more enjoyable, and then the most importantly, more safe for all pilots. Um, you know, every time I fly with my dad, he's like, oh, cool, yeah, I'll come pick you up from Austin in the plane. Um, and then he remarks about how 20 years ago, you couldn't just tap on a, an iPhone and be like, okay, cool, yep, I can fly today. Here's my route, let's go. There was so much planning involved and you just couldn't make those kind of spur of the moment decisions to look outside the window, verify on the phone and then like hop out and go fly. So that's a really unique thing to see how that has changed aviation so much. And I think the thing that I love most about working at Forklight is I get to see all the behind the scenes of a product that I, you know, use almost daily and, you know, have grown such a fan of. So I get to be in meetings where these new feature ideas are first being presented outside of, you know, kind of developer circle. And then I get to see these meetings a few months later where we have the first demos of these products. And then, you know, eventually it's like, hey, we're going to release this product next month. Let's get all the marketing materials behind it. So, you know, I get to be helping out of, you know, how are we going to present this feature on social? How are we going to educate people about the, you know, these new things that they may have been asking for, for, you know, the past six months to a year, and we're finally going to give it to them. And so it's really interesting to see kind of the, the timeline of a feature move through, especially for things such as, you know, hold advisor or profile view on iPhone, which have been you know, asked for, for quite a long time, seeing it go through development to, you know, the, is this going to go or not? And then finally pushing it out the door and seeing all the reactions from people just get so excited. Uh, that really motivates me to, you know, keep going and doing what we're doing at Four Flight. And it's, it's incredible. You know, every month we're releasing new features, uh, new updates that is on someone's wish list, making something easier, safer uh, while you're in the cockpit. And just, you know, it's like Four Flight's like your, your friend when you're flying. It, it can really do so many things for you. So I think working for that company in general, it's, it's an incredible experience. Emily, is, is there somewhere where you could go and find the original version of Four Flight, the very first version, <laughs> and put it on an iPad and just, just put it side by side and look, look to see the changes? Because most of us have forgotten the changes. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what Four Flight looked, uh, you know, four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, so I remember we were trying to do, there was a trend on Twitter um, something like how it was 10 years ago versus now. I forgot what the actual catchy saying was, but we were trying to find a picture of four flight from at least 10 years ago. And there was only one. Um, and it's, you know, on an iPhone three, I think it was. And it was, it was just a little like clunky, bulky, not as intuitive. I don't, the aeronautical map wasn't on there. So essentially just the, you know, the charts themselves, um, I wasn't flying back then, so definitely never used it. Um, but yeah, no, unfortunately, you can just use the the up to date, brand new, best running version of Four Flight, not the old one. I, I will say that I've been a, an examiner for a little bit over five years now, and and to watch the the evolution of it, um, I would I would say five years ago, and this is just an informal poll, but I would say five years ago that ninety percent of my applicants came in with a paper chart. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was, it was unusual when someone came in using a uh, four flight or an electronic version and it, it was allowable, but, um, and, and I didn't have any problem with it, but now I think it's flipped. I would say probably 90% come in with, with, uh, you know, um, four flight, um, and, and, you know, the, the cross country that, that I will give, uh, to applicants, uh, most of the time requires a fuel stop. And, you know, I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, well, what, what's your reasoning? Why did you pick this place? And a lot of times they'll say, well, because it's got cheap fuel. And, you know, that's, <laughs> that's that. just, that's just a feature in four flight. You can display yeah. fuel prices. And if, if I'm flying my own air, I mean, when I've flown to Oshkosh, you know, I picked a place up in Missouri that has the cheapest fuel and um, um, you know, it's, it's just economics. Now, now, back in the day, prior to four flight, that would have taken a lot of time to, to, to figure out, you know, you'd have to call places. What, what's your fuel price, you know, and, but it's, mm -hmm. it's just a, a tap now. So it's, it's a great feature. Yeah. And one thing on that is like, we like to say that you can even, you know, if you're doing a really long cross country, you can pay for your four flight subscription by just using that fuel price layer and saving on fuel. 
Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. It's insane. Yeah, it's a great tool. And I, I, I can remember when Wally gave me my check ride, my instrument check ride, it was four years ago or so that it, the scuttlebutt was, you can't do electronic stuff. You can't use electronic mm -hmm. stuff. And I really think Wally was the one, if not the first, one of the first that really supported and encouraged it. Um, didn't require paper, right. Encouraged you to have paper backup, but the, the, the electronics was, was good and usable. And, uh, I think he embraced it early on, which I thought was fantastic. So, um, I've never had to use paper again. I've always had it as a backup for my check rides, but embracing mm -hmm. the technology, it's here to stay. And four flights made a huge impact on cockpit resource management, the capability of seeing traffic. And, um, obviously we could go on and on and on with, with what we get in the cockpit today on a fairly inexpensive device related to aviation, meaning iPad and a subscription mm -hmm. that really is the most cost effective thing in aviation, as far as I'm concerned, for sure. The 10 charts and yeah, well, paid for the, the subscription. Exactly. And yeah, Wally, if you're tech friendly, then I'm definitely calling you for my IFR check ride. <laughs> I'll well, just bring you lots know, of backups. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, one, one thing that, and I don't get this question so much anymore, but you mm -hmm. know, again, I, I say five years ago, 90% of the people were using paper. And then, then I would get a lot of text message and emails saying, is it okay to use four flight? And I would say my, my, my standard answer was, I want you to use on your check ride, what you're going to use tomorrow when you take your family on a cross country trip. I exactly, mean, what, yeah. what, what are what, what good are we doing by you showing me that you can use a paper chart if tomorrow you're going to trash that paper chart and you're going to use four flight tomorrow so let's use today what you're going to use tomorrow i like yeah, it for sure what uh i mean we could talk about features all day i was going to say what's your favorite feature <laughs> that's kind of like impossible to answer what was yeah. i guess what was the evolution point for you uh at the company where where you saw the biggest change, I guess, Emily, if there is such a point in your career at four flight, was it the acquisition? Was it some release? Was it, what, what was it for you? Yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously the acquisition was, was huge. Um, you know, we didn't know it was coming and I think there was a lot of mixed feelings, um, not, not from internally employees, but, uh, from the general public that, Oh no, What's going to happen to Little Four Flight? That's my, you know, that's my company. That's who I use every single day. Um, and I think there's still some hesitation about that, but it's been, you know, almost at least two years. I feel like COVID years, I'm not sure how to count them anymore, but I think it's been at least two years um, and nothing's changed. Um, you know, if anything, we're using them to leverage, to put out new features and tap into, you know, more Jeppesen data and just reach, reach new heights. Um, but it's been great so far, like smooth sailing, not a lot of changes on the internal side. Um, so that was definitely, definitely a game changer. Um, but there have been a few releases that kind of come to mind where I'm just like, wow, we are going outside of just the basic safety and utilization of a device in the cockpit, but we're just making things that are just downright really cool. Uh, we launched, um, kind of our 3D suite of features. If I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, they are in our performance plus uh, package, but it's just incorporated something very like high end tech into what some people think is a, you know, simple flight planning solution. You know, essentially I can tap on any airport or any space on the map and get a 3D view of it. Uh, you know, during the day, at night, just to see like what, or to know what I'm going to expect whenever I actually get to the airport. Um, you know, lately we've actually incorporated internet traffic into that. So you're actually seeing the traffic live at that airport. So you can kind of see, you know, a flow of, okay, what runway are they using right now? Um, how are they vectoring people? And just, you know, getting a really full overall picture. Um, it's things like that. And these kind of more recent releases that make you realize you can just dive into this one single app. There's no reason to go anywhere else. And you, the, it's almost like information overload. It's all useful and you can kind of, you know, pick and choose what you like to take from it. Um, but it's just so inclusive into one spot and kind of releases like that have made me realize that we're really, you know, pushing forward to be the, be, be the it thing in, in the general aviation and business aviation. 
Yeah, I love it. I actually stumbled on that feature yesterday as I was oh, preparing cool. to go to Austin myself. And I was really doing more of a weather briefing for myself, but turned on the 3D view of I did it for Brenham and uh, Giddings and then uh, Austin mm -hmm. as well, because I was planning on making those stops just to uh, get some landings in. And I was shocked that I was seeing someone doing a touch and go in Brenham, not just yeah. in the 2D view, but in the 3D view, I was actually seeing them take off and I rotated that 3D view back towards hooks and saw three or four of our flight school planes also flying as the little triangle. <laughs> yeah. and I thought it was very interesting. It, uh, once you get the library on all of those planes, I'll be really impressed though. When I see right? the six, six box shots actually red and white in the air, then I'll be really, really, I'm yeah, just kidding. We're going to have to work with like infinite fly or something. They do amazing jobs on older library aircrafts. It is. It's a really cool feature and gives me a perspective of what, what's the approach going to look like. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's a really, really cool feature. I like it a lot for sure. Yeah. I definitely find it more useful at night because we have incorporated, um, you know, the actual airport lighting that you're going to see and just kind of knowing like where that's going to be um, because it is at night, you know, that's, it's essentially the exact same picture that you're going to see in the air. Um, it's, it's been really useful. Awesome. So let's jump back quickly to Between Two Wings and talk a little bit about mm -hmm. some of the guests that you've had, um, some of the uh, things that you might be planning on doing in 2022, um, and give our listeners a little bit of what, what should they do? What should, how can they listen? How should they listen? And where do they go find more? Definitely. Um, so Between Two Wings is available on YouTube and essentially wherever you find your podcast. So after you listen to Behind the Prop, you can just, you know, search between two wings and you'll probably find it on the same platforms. Um, but essentially I am just interviewing aviation enthusiast pilots from all around the industry. Um, you know, all the pilots I'm interviewing are actually using for flight, um, which is really incredible because it just kind of highlights and showcases how far our product actually reaches. But the good thing about this series is we're not talking about for flight. Um, and actually very rarely mention it. We're really just trying to, you know, show off that everyone has a unique story and perspective um, in the industry. So some of the people I've interviewed so far, you know, it's been Mark Baker from AOPA. He's their president. Um, he was really fun to talk to just because AOPA is another one of those GA organizations that we all know and love. And just to hear a little bit more about what they're actually doing and have to deal with every single day to protect our freedoms to fly. Cannot praise those people enough. Um, I tried with... Um, the CEO of FlyGoware, Daniel Baker, um, and then also our CEO, Tyson Weiss. Um, those are really good, interesting episodes. They, they both kind of, you know, brought a product to the market that has become the standard um, in all types of aviation, and they've just really changed it up. And then also we work closely with FlyGoware, so it's always kind of interesting to hear a little bit more about them. But I think diving into more of the pilot side, I interviewed a hurricane hunter from NOAA and it's just, it's absolutely incredible and insane what they do. And, you know, we all live in Houston. What these people do is directly impacting some of the decisions that we make. Do we evacuate, you know, do we, do we stay here and hunker down? Um, and it's, it's incredible what they go through just to make sure that the general public um, can be up, you know, upstate informed about these dangerous storms that are coming in absolutely incredible. I assume they're not really afraid of turbulence if they're doing that, right? Uh, no, at one point she was telling me how she has to stand up and, you know, hold the yoke down while breaking through the eye of the wall. And, and oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> we could have talked for hours. I had a little so bit of a crosswind, <laughs> a little bit of a crosswind there, Wally. Yeah. Uh, breaking wow. through the eye of the hurricane. Wow. Yeah. She said, everyone's just chatting up, um, you know, about their weekend, you know, like nothing's about to happen. Um, very, very calm. I'm sure this is a, you know, this process has been refined down to a T. So <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. Truly amazing. Well, one thing that stands out to me in the last year about for flight and really technology in general, because I am a technologist at heart, um, was the keynote speech. I have been waiting for this new iPad mini forever from Apple, and they finally were going to do their keynote. And I was, as an aviator, as a friend of yours and others that work for Four Flight, I was amazed that the first thing they showed on the Apple keynote for the new iPad mini was Four Flight. That had to have been a proud moment. You probably were involved as a marketing person, had to be exciting. 
Oh yeah. Um, you know, I think it was just really neat to see aviation represented and such a huge, widely watched event. Um, you know, clearly aviators around the world, whether it be military, business, commercial, you know, guys like us, um, we're all, you know, probably buying iPad minis because those are, you know, the most comfortable in the cockpit for a lot of us. Uh, I do think we have a, a big, a big uh, hold there on that market. Um, but it was just absolutely incredible. And that kind of goes back to, you know, Forfly was actually one of the first apps in the app store. Um, and I kind of talked about this a little bit more with Tyson in our interview, but we were one of the first apps in the app store. And then they actually got a little bit of a preview of the iPad when it was going to come out. Um, and that's when they kind of realized that, wow, with this iPad, we could really make something out of this four flight app. So uh, there has been a little bit of a connection there, but then also, like I said, I think us pilots are holding it down for the iPad mini. So yes, I think we definitely are buying the newest version on a regular basis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I'm sure I'll continue to do the same thing. I've probably had three or four iterations of iPad minis, but the new mm -hmm. one's really cool. And I think the pencil's amazing. So kudos to Apple and kudos to Forflight for making those things work together. Um, and I thought the, the, they represented, I believe it was a military. Maybe it was a, a little bit of a, aircraft rescue type team but it, it mm -hmm. definitely showed the capabilities of four flight in that um keynote and then i it resonated with me that it, the, the device is very important in the cockpit for sure and i think i think everyone can relate to the if if i went to fly now and i didn't have four flight that would probably be equal to fuel wally just so you know i don't think i would go <laughs> I, I would need both fuel 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 and four flight um yeah it was very important so you, you mentioned the hurricane hunter. Was she your uh, most exciting interview? Um, as far as learning a different side of aviation and just like a holy crap, you, holy crap, you actually do that. You fly into this weather um, on that perspective. Yes. I think from the, you know, always learning as a pilot side of things. When I interviewed uh, Jen Pierce, she is um, and she's a controller at Houston center um, it was kind of that moment that all pilots want. They want kind of an alone time with a controller to, you know, get comfortable because I still have, you know, some, some comms fright from time to time with my, my IFR training. So, you know, get that alone time with a controller to realize like, Hey, they're still human. They're trying to make, you know, this whole process go smoothly and make sure everyone, you know, gets on the ground safely. You know, we're truly working as a team. And I learned, so I learned a lot about, you know, that side of, you know, if they say they're on their landline, they probably are, but you know, then again, they might not be it just kind of depends on the day. Um, she brought a lot of humor and comedy to it as well. And ironically, the next flight I did, I was way more confident on the, on the radio. And even if I you know, messed up or something, just didn't get embarrassed, just kind of plowed through it. So I think it just kind of made me realize that there needs to be more connection between you know, tr controllers and pilots. Um, so we can just, you know, all keep the, the skies friendlier and safer. No doubt. No doubt. Well, Emily, I got to say, I thank you very much for joining our show. Uh, and I will <laughs> encourage others to watch your show and be participants uh, between two wings and learn more about aviation and help the aviation community as well. As we always say, continue to fly safe and stay behind the prop. Thanks for checking out the Behind the Prop podcast. Be sure to click subscribe and check us out online at BehindTheProp.com. Behind the Prop is recorded in Houston, Texas. Creator and host is Bobby Doss. Co-host is Wally Mulhern. The show is for entertainment purposes only and is not meant to replace actual flight instruction. Thanks for listening and remember, fly safe.